Welcome back. It is 9:10. Just like the rest of the nation, Chicago and Illinois are seeing the Delta variant trend. COVID cases in the wrong direction, but this surge isn't like the one we saw during the same time last year. That's because a lot of our population is now vaccinated. But at what point do we need to start worrying about reinstating any mitigations? We are joined by Chicago Department of Public Health's Dr. Allison Arwady to find out how we're doing as the Delta variant continues to climb. Good morning and welcome back, Commissioner. Uh, I want to take a look. At the positivity rate in our area right now, looking at it yesterday, it was at 3.9%. In late July, it was at 0.4%. That appeared to be a pandemic low. But if we take a look at the number of deaths and hospitalizations that we see on the COVID dashboard, you can see those numbers are much lower than this time last year prior to vaccines. Do you think those numbers will increase with the Delta variant surge? Yeah, so that's a perfect explanation. Uh, I do expect that we will continue to see some increase in hospitalizations and deaths, but we're seeing that almost exclusively in people who are unvaccinated. And so whereas last year when we would see cases really surging up high, we'd see very high hospitalizations and deaths following along, what we're seeing with this surge purely because of the vaccine is that even as cases rise, those more severe outcomes are staying lower than they were really at any point before we had a vaccine available. So we certainly, the Delta is here, it is real, uh, and it is more transmissible, mm -hmm. but we're feeling really pleased that the vaccine continues to protect, especially against those severe outcomes. So what's currently being done or what plans are being made to continue to get as many people vaccinated as possible? I know you guys have been uh, going to people's homes. Is there a chance those mass vaccine sites might reopen once the vaccines have, have been fully accepted? or approved, I should say? So we'll see, I think, you know, yeah, so there was some additional news, you know, that we're, we're hearing some preliminary things, you know, we may be heading towards some more booster shots. At this point, uh, the only booster shot that's recommended is for people who are severely immunocompromised and what, what, you know, you can look online to find out, but that's folks with, you know, currently undergoing cancer treatment, um, organ transplant, that kind of thing. Um, but I think, you know, we're, we're going to see what this demand looks like. What we're really focused on, first and foremost, is continuing to get Chicagoans, you know, their first and if needed, their second dose. Um, and we we are making progress. I'll tell you, I know people feel like, oh, at this point, hasn't everybody gotten vaccine? Right. But, you know, the West Englewood area was our area of the biggest increase last week, where we look at numbers of, of first doses of vaccine. So we're, we've got it available and we're still seeing people signing up. So that's what we yeah. want to see happening, especially as Delta's here. So you're not so convinced that for people who've not been vaccinated, that they're never going to be, because you just mentioned that you've seen an increase in one area. And is the Delta variant convincing people that maybe it's time? And then once it is fully approved, do you hope that's gonna make a difference? Yeah, I think certainly across the U.S. we have seen an increase in vaccinations. And I think in the South, for example, that is just getting hit unbelievably hard with Delta right now, where vaccination rates are much lower. Uh, we've seen an increase. Vaccinations up about 11 percent across the country. We've seen a little bit of an increase here. I'm hopeful we'll see some more increase. Um, uh, unfortunately, as there is more COVID here, people will start to feel those effects like in their own families and in their neighborhoods. Um, and I do, you know, I expect that the full author authorization to come very soon here. Uh, if I had to take a guess by Labor Day, probably September at the latest. Um, and I know there are some folks who wanted to wait for that full FDA approval. So I think that will also be something uh, that helps give a boost. But all the safety data is in no long term side effects. Uh, and really, now is the time if people haven't made that decision already. You know, a lot of people are talking about they're worried about the fall. Are we going to go through another lockdown? I've heard people saying I need to hurry up and go on my vacation before we go into a lockdown. Last year we had tiered phases of levels for mitigations. Do you think we're going to be dealing with that again and possibly seeing some rollbacks if this surge continues? 
Yeah, so I am very hopeful that we will not need to do those large scale, you know, societal level shutdowns. Certainly our goal is to be able to stay open, but also stay careful. Uh, if we started to see this threatening our healthcare system, which to be clear, we're not at this point, you know, we might need to change the calculus, or if it looked like the vaccines were not effective against a new variant, for example, that could really change mm -hmm. the way we're thinking. But otherwise, you know, right now, while we get through Delta, everybody's got to have that mask on. On, right indoors again um, and then just getting more and more folks vaccinated as soon as we can I'm a little worried about the fall and winter too that's regularly a respiratory virus surge for us um, but I think where folks are vaccinated um, we're not seeing those severe outcomes and as long as the vaccine continues to be broadly effective especially against the severe outcomes uh, our hope is not to have to do those big societal level rollbacks we'll do them if we have to but that's not at all our goal Okay, so let's talk about vaccines. New York City became the first major city to order mandatory vaccines and weekly testing for its employees. The state of California then followed suit. Is Chicago next? Are you guys currently in discussions about this? Yeah, so you, you likely saw on Friday, uh, Chicago Public Schools announced that all of its uh, employees, all of its adults, its staff uh, will need to be fully vaccinated. Um, and there is always in every situation an exemption for medical reasons or an exemption for religious reasons with appropriate documentation. Um, but there was otherwise not a testing opt out there. There are additional conversations certainly that are happening and we've, uh, you know, ac across the city and we've been looking at other places that have done this. Also been really pleased to see um, settings across Chicago make that decision to um, require vaccination for their employees or to look for proof of vaccination, especially in higher risk indoor settings like bars or clubs, um, potentially even restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been good to see. Vaccination is the most important thing uh, in terms of helping keep people safe from COVID and then masks while we're indoors when our level is relatively high like it is right now. The combination of those two things I do think are going to get us through without needing to do those major rollbacks. But again, you know, you can't always predict the future. So discussions are being uh, talked about as far as getting municipal employees uh, vaccinated, but there's been no decision made then. I just want to clarify that, right? That's correct. Yes, okay. we've been talking with unions. Obviously, they want to make sure their employees are also working in safe workplaces, um, but but it's uh, it's an ongoing conversation. There's a lot of stakeholders involved. OK, um, I have a couple of questions for you. We're running out of time, so we're going to take a break here. Dr. Arwadi, please stick around. I want to talk to you about mask mandates and also the travel advisories. So don't go away. We'll be right back with Dr. Allison Arwadi.